This video is going to go over every feature we know is coming in 7 Days to Die Alpha 20 at the time of recording, which is the 19th of July 2021. So if something big was announced and I missed it, that's why. A quick disclaimer, I'm not going to go into excruciating detail for most of the features in here because I have an entire series dedicated to that called Alpha 20 in depth where I delve into the depths of the forums and find all the info on the topic and then overthink it. A link to that playlist will be in the description if you want to know more about most of the features in this video. Anyway, let's go over every single feature coming in 7 days to die alpha 20 so far. Sorry if I missed something. Okay, where to start? I know, guns. Everyone loves guns. Alpha 20 is bringing four brand new guns in the form of the pipe rifle, pistol, shotgun and machine gun. These will be craftable on day one and we're officially losing the blunderbuss. F in the chat, you won't be missed. Also on the topic of new guns is the weapon HD retexturings. We'll be seeing a new HD model for the Magnum, the SMG, the M60, the AK-47 and possibly the Marksman rifle. There's also talk of a lever action rifle but sources are largely contradictory and indicate it could be replacing the hunting rifle or that it may just be the pipe rifle. On an adjacent topic we'll also be seeing a new pipe baton to come before the stun baton and while not in alpha 20 as far as we know there will also be a plasma baton coming after the stun baton in a future update. If anyone is wondering why I know about the plasma baton is because it's in the game files already. Also on a somewhat related topic in that it is kind of related to weaponry we have the robotic drone. Finally confirmed for Alpha 20 after originally being slated for Alpha 19. It's gone through some pretty severe redesigns. Again, watch the video dedicated to this if you want to know more because it's very different from its original design. I don't have a segue for the next section, so I'll just do something random. Random generation is seeing a huge update. This is another topic that's a bit too big to go into too much detail in this video, but the short of it is new stamps will allow artist design features like mountains to be pasted into your world that will look a lot better than the current random gen mountains. We'll also have more controls to better customise the type of map you want. It's pretty extensive but it still falls slightly short of either king gen or nitrogen. And we'll be seeing new 6k and 10k maps with big improvements to generation times. Also we'll be seeing a replacement of the original three pre-gen maps to accommodate for the new random gen features. Related to this we're also seeing huge improvements in city generation. The short of it is that we're going to see sidewalks and districts to allow cities to feel more logical, immersive and and connected. And there's a new system to prevent the same PUI spawning next to itself as much as they do now. No more 8 hospitals in one city. It would also be silly not to mention that there is apparently 100 new PUIs coming in Alpha 20 as well as a lot of props and decorations. On a kind of sort of but not really related note we also have something called dynamic imposters. This basically means that if you knock down say Dishong Tower you won't see it in the distance anymore. Currently the game still shows imposters of what was once there if you're far enough away even if you knock down the building building or build a new one. With this change, you'll stop seeing ghosts of buildings that don't exist anymore. On the topic of buildings, building is being updated. The shape menu is going to be massively overhauled to be more standardised. So we'll be able to make almost every block into almost any shape instead of some of the blocks missing certain shapes like right now. The upgrade progression has also been simplified into going from wood to stone to concrete to steel. No more gradual reinforcements, just big meaty upgrades. Speaking of meat, now you're dead mate with the new feral sense game options. Yeah okay that was a bit of a stretch but I have to connect these somehow. Feral Sense is essentially a difficulty setting that allows zombies to detect you a lot easier and will stay focused on you for much longer than they currently do. In the current version without any skills or perks, a zombie will only really try to hunt you for about a minute before getting bored. You can set this setting so that zombies don't have the ability, boo, or they can have it exclusively during the day or night or constantly for the authentic zombie horror experience. Speaking of experience, experience and days survived won't be the only way to improve the loot you get anymore. Now biomes will have difficulty modifiers which makes harder zombies and better loot spawn in these biomes. The desert will multiply your game stage by 1.5, snow biome by 2 and the wasteland by 3. With the possible addition of low grade radiation and all the accompanying features to combat it but this may be pushed into alpha 21. And the burned forest is gone, it's just gone. Its assets have been given to the wasteland biome to make it more interesting than its current two assets which appear to be cinder blocks and the colour brown. Now that I mention the colour brown, fucking kill me, vehicles will now actually be tintable to show what dyes you have equipped on them. That's not all vehicles will have, now they will be moddable like weapons. With expanded seating which gives more seats obviously, off-road headlights which makes your vehicle headlights brighter, the fuel saver, figure that one out yourself, the reserve fuel tank which increases fuel capacity and the supercharger which increases the base 
pace and max speed of a vehicle. None of these are equipable on bicycles. We're also getting a new quest, Restore Power. You go to a place, the lights turn off, you turn them back on. Now that's what I call content. We're also getting improvements to the Buried Supplies quests. We don't know much about these changes, but what we do know is that we will be getting Tier 3 Buried Supply quests. Also, now when you unlock a new tier of quests, there will always be tiers below that available. So for example, when you unlock Tier 2, you'll still have access to 5 Tier 1s every day. And then when you unlock Tier 3, you'll still have access to 5 Tier 2s and 5 Tier 1s. This continues all the way up to Tier 5, just in case you're bored of clearing nothing but waterworks at Tier 4 and nothing but shamway at tier 5. We're also getting some animation improvements which means that wind will dynamically affect trees and plants. Before we jump into the rest of the video I just want to remind you that if you're enjoying today's video be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe for more 7 days to die alpha 20 news. Also just before we get back to the video I'm not sure how many subscribers I will have at the time of uploading this but right now we are just about at 1k so I'm going to assume I'm almost at 1k subscribers by the time this video comes out in which case thank you guys so much. This channel has grown so much in the past 6 months from when I uploaded my first video and it's really nice to see that you guys are responding so well to the these videos. Speaking of videos, let's get back to this one. I'm going to really quickly mention the three improvements that are listed for Alpha 20, but we have next to no info about. They are dynamic music and ambient audio improvements, trader to trader progression, and loot progression and game staging improvements. We know they're coming, but no info has been released. Now back to the stuff we do know. Back at the start of this video, I mentioned that a lot of guns are getting HD remakes. Well, guns aren't the only ones getting a makeover. We're seeing new HD models for Trader Hugh, the Nurse, Cap is livid, the Screamer, the Hazmat Zombie, the Soldier, the Cop, three variants of the Burn Zombie, the Hoodie Zombie, Lumberjack, and whatever in the nine realms this fucking thing is. Some animals are also getting reskins too, including the zombie dog and apparently the chicken, but no images are available of the chicken. And of course, the most important change coming to Alpha 20 is piles of wood. It's just wood. You'll look at it and you go, oh wow, wood, and then you do whatever you were doing. Really quickly, because I know someone will ask about them, there are three known features that were originally coming in Alpha 20, but have since been pushed back to Alpha 21. Those are AI improvements like wandering sleepers and zombies being able to crawl through one meter holes. The character overhaul, which features a reworked character creator as well as apparently the most hated feature in gaming history, the reworked outfit and armor system. And finally, the water overhaul has been pushed back as well. So that was everything. Except it wasn't. I completely forgot to mention that there'll be a new enemy coming in 7 Days to Die Alpha 20. The current Hawaiian zombie is being repurposed into a gasser zombie which will have a spit attack and a gas cloud attack. There isn't any further details on how this enemy will spawn or how the gas will affect the player but I just thought I'd add this in here because I forgot to mention it in the original recording. Now I want to hear from you. Are there any features in particular coming in Alpha 20 that you're really excited for? Is there any that you're absolutely dreading? Let us know down in the comments. But with that guys, thank you so much for for watching and this was recorded a long time after the rest of the video and I have since reached 1000 subscribers so thank you guys for that and I'll see you in the next video.